potential and everything around us for play and whimsy and interesting interactions that we don't even think twice about and it's everywhere. There's like all this potential magic in the world that we don't even think about. I've been making machines since I was very young. I think the first thing I made, I was six years old and it was a machine called the Candy Machine. So I put candy in a tube and it went down the tube and rolled around and landed in a box. And it was pretty simple, but that started me off. When I realized that it made my parents kind of laugh, then I got spurred on to make more and more elaborate devices. It wasn't until I was 22 that I was watching these Japanese Rube Goldberg machines on YouTube and I got really inspired with my roommates. So together we started building something. And they lost interest after a few hours and I just kept going and going and going and it reawoke this childhood passion. So after seven months I had this huge thing that went around the whole apartment and I didn't know what to do with it. So I filmed it and I put it on YouTube and I got millions of, of hits. And then I started getting job offers and all kinds of interesting opportunities. Fast forward five years, here I am doing it full time. I do a lot of workshops with kids all over the world now. I got to appear on Sesame Street and I'm down here in, in Charlotte working on this huge project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. I got down to McCall Center and I've been working very hard on a new machine called the dresser. It starts with me sleeping and when my alarm clock goes off I can drop it in a glass of water to shut it up which also conveniently starts a chain reaction which helps me get dressed. It's the biggest machine I've ever made and it's for a live performance. The first machine I made, Cream That Egg, it's got my hand in it, putting the, the initial ball. As I've gone on, I've decided to place myself more and more in them because it's fun and it's natural. Like these are things that I've always been making it all my life and they are to help me. So it makes sense that I would be involved with them. But this machine behind me, the dresser, it's the most involved I've ever been in a live show, taking it to a new level. It's sort of all choreographed with my movements and time. So, you know, as something rolls past me, I have to put my shoe on at just the right moment so that it rolls under where my foot was. Stuff like that. I've actually finished making it this whole thing. And what I'm doing now is I'm testing it over and over and over again. I want to test it 50 times before I show it and it has to work every time and if anything goes wrong I have to stop and start again. So that for one I know that I've ironed out all the kinks and also it gives me a certain trust in the machine behind me in faith that I have to see with my own eyes in order to, to feel comfortable and know that it's going to do its thing. I like to say I'm using familiar objects in unfamiliar ways and I think that that's important because it's so easy to go every day through your life from A to B to C without thinking twice about the things you're doing like brushing your teeth and, and washing your face and then getting dressed and so on when there's all this potential in all of these objects and all of these actions and tasks. So I hope people rethink those things after seeing my work.